Welcome to Life in Motion. Now I'm going to cover something today which I think is missed quite often on YouTube when people are collecting their new cars. Um, I will also cover on a few different things about how I bought my car and also the experience I felt uh, when I went to buy it. So um, with that, let's go. Now I bought a car back in 2017 in September uh, from Mini Park Lane in London. <clears throat> Why am I telling you this? Well, I needed a car that can get me from A to B, um, but wasn't on finance uh, and was a used car. I didn't want finance because I was leaving my job uh, out of the motor trade uh, to go into uh, another profession. And I didn't want finance if it didn't quite work out, so then I'd have to pay it off. So um, yeah, I went down there uh, and obviously I, I bought the car from them. As a little bit of background, so like everyone, I went straight on to, uh, to the Tinder for Cars, Auto Trader, uh, and I was going through, I was sc scrolling through, and I couldn't really find anything. I put my parameters in, 20,000, uh, less than 10,000 miles, two years old or less. Uh, I, didn't, I had a black one, so I didn't want a black one. I had a green one, so I didn't want a green one. Uh, I wanted a manual, personal preference, um, but I liked high-spec cars. So I really wanted a high-spec car. I didn't want anything that, that was going to be kind of sitting low and that I wasn't very happy with. So kind of nothing really came up. I had to increase my budget a little bit, uh, and then boom. Two cars came up at Mini Park Lane in London. Uh, they were basically identical on the outside. You wouldn't have known. Maybe one of them had stripes, but apart from that, it looked identical. On the inside, however, one of them had hardly anything compared to the other. Um, but there was a thousand pound difference. But when I looked it up on, on the different sheets, there was well over a thousand, well over a thousand pound of extras on the on the more expensive one than the cheap one. So obviously, it was an easy no-brainer. I went for the more expensive one. So when I was buying the car. Um, I, f I went through Auto Trader as we all do. I was swiping left and right, if you know what I mean. And um, I found the car, I liked it. And so that was the next step. That was when the buying process started um, because I inquired. Now, I kind of a top tip if you're not ready to buy a car, I wouldn't inquire on a car. You can get finance deals online, you can get specs online, you can get all the knowledge online through YouTube channels, anything you want. So I wouldn't inquire on a car unless you're ready to buy that car uh, if the deal is right. And make sure your expectations are correct. Now, when I say if the deal is right, if you're looking at a car which is £500 a month with four grand as a deposit, don't ask them for £300 a month with a grand deposit because it's just not going to happen. Well, maybe unless you're a certain brand, but it doesn't matter. Um, be realistic with what you're asking for. So I, I put the inquiry in, I, um, I explained what I wanted, and then I got a call from Lauren. Lauren said, hi, I'm Lauren. I said, hi, I'm Jack. But you already know that because I've inquired. Um, so yeah, she sent me a video. Now, I think purposely, it wasn't the best video. Uh, and that sounds really silly. It was in their underground car park and it was kind of, I think, buried in quite a few cars. Um, and it gives you a glimpse of what you're looking at. And it was perfect. Now, pictures online, sometimes are great, sometimes aren't. I think this one had just gone online, so it, the, there was only a few pictures. So a video really took me on a journey with the car and really showed me around it and got my appetite straight away. So I said, Lauren, that looks great. We had a little bit of a chat, we had a bit of a negotiation, uh, and I put a deposit down on the car over the phone uh, to then go back uh, during the week uh, after to have a look at the car. So back to Mini Park Lane. This is where I think they really come into their own. I said to Lauren, I love it, absolutely, you know, obviously I put the deposit down on the car, but I can only come in on Thursday, is that okay? She said, yeah, of course it is. I'll pay you for your congestion charge. And I thought, oh, that's, I mean, I was, you know, fully willing to pay for that, but she just straight away said that to me because we built that relationship up and it was just a nice gesture. It was, it was, it was above what I, I expected. Uh, I said, oh, that's, that's really kind of you, thank you. So I got there uh, and I think I called or something and I said, hi Lauren, I'm outside. Uh, I'm just parked on the street. And obviously the, the street at a meeting you had to pay, like in everywhere in London, you have to pay for a, a, a parking space. And said, okay, great, we'll come and park your car. And again, that's just something that Parkland didn't need to do, but they did. So they took it away to their underground car, car park somewhere in storage, very safe and secure, um, while I was in there, while I was doing the test drive again, while I was doing the paperwork and bits and bobs. So that was just one thing that really highlighted me, even before I got there, that they were they were serious. They, they, were, some, they were a really good showroom. Now, back when I was saying that um, it may have been easier for me to be used to the process, I had been to a mini dealership um, not long ago, locally to me, and I was quite disappointed because they weren't very good. So actually, maybe I had my expectations set low, um, but it still didn't matter because they still really did exceed them. Now, if you go into 
restaurant for your first Tinder date, or if you go into a bar with your mates, uh, and you're sitting there at the bar, and there's no music playing, and there's no one talking, uh, and everyone's really silent. It's a really bit, a bit awkward. Um, I feel like those types of situations, an atmosphere always makes, literally, 80% of the enjoyment is the atmosphere. You go and enjoy the buzz that you're in. For me personally, I love being around people that are laughing and, and enjoying themselves. It just makes me in a happier mood. So when I got there, I walked straight in. It's easy for a showroom to have no atmosphere. Big showrooms, uh, very impressive, but there's nothing going on. But in Park Lane, there wasn't loads of people there, but there was a buzz. There was music playing, there was people talking to me. Everyone that came in, even if I didn't talk to them, they spoke to me. And it wasn't like a, oh, hi, can we help you? This is where you go. They were, they were talking to me, they were chatting. Where have you come from? What do you want? Oh, you're looking at that, that's lovely. They, they were going through the process and that was really nice to see. So it already built that atmosphere up. I haven't even met Lauren at this point, but I built that atmosphere up. So I was sitting, I was waiting. I think Lauren was with the customer. Uh, it looked like they were selling a car. They were very happy, which, which is nice. And I had a drink and I sat down on the little sofa they have. They had a little touch screen to work on, on a new car if you wanted to, which is a nice touch. Uh, and it just looked lovely. The, the showroom looked nice. Uh, all the cars were clean. And actually, if you go to a mini showroom, often quite a lot of them are kind of dark and they've got neons and things. So they have a real individual look to them. And this one nailed it. Honestly, it looked fantastic. And actually, for Park Lane, which is, I'd assume, extremely expensive, they have a really good square foot. They've got an underground bit, they've got a few floors, they've got cars everywhere. It was really, really nicely done. Now, I was rather lucky, because when I spoke to Laura on the phone, she ran me through the spec. Uh, and obviously, it literally had everything on it. And it's actually a September 2015 car, which is when the manual in the JCW was released. So I am kind of assuming this was probably like a release car. They're kind of the top of the top. Some absolutely crazy person, for reasons unknown to science, paid 32,800 and something pounds. It's a mini. It's 32,000, more than 32,000. That is unbelievable. So, uh, anyway, she ran me through the spec and she missed one thing off that probably, to other people, may have sold the car. for a Remus exhaust on my car uh, with the valves on it to make it a little bit louder. I'd, I'd, I'd looked at it, I'd seen how much it cost and I'd factored that into my costings. When I got there, she said to me, Jack, I said, yes, Lauren. She said, you do know it's got the Bluetooth exhaust, don't you? I said, you're joking. And it did. And actually, that was one of the most cleverly dropped bits of information I think she could have done. Because ultimately, that is a huge benefit. Now, bear in mind, the Bluetooth exhaust is a huge option. I think it's like a, a, over a fan, over fifteen hundred pounds, so it's a big option, and that wasn't on the on the sheet. Um, so when I found out and I got it and it was working, I mean, oh my god, I was so happy by that. Um, so you know, those little bits of information is what I can enjoy because I'd done the research, as we'd spoken about it. When I got there, anything that I would have found out otherwise would have been a benefit, not a drawback. Admittedly, there was bits around the car that weren't great. There was a bit of damage. There was wheels that needed to be done. Uh, and they fixed them. They said, we need to do that, we're gonna do it, because it needs to be an appropriate, proved, used standard. And they did that. And um, there was a slight difference with the with the one of the wheels. There was a little bit of marking uh, after a little while of, of having the car, but they fixed it, and that's no concern. I don't mind if things don't quite turn out how they want to do. It's not their fault. But as long as they can rectify the situation, I'm happy. So guys, I've explained quite a bit today about collection processing, a, a little bit of advice about what I think. If you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments below so I can answer them. And also make sure you like, because that will help other people find the video and learn from it as well. But make sure to subscribe to see future videos. But for now, I'll see you soon. I'm